Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. So in the comments of my vectors video, Puzzle Master asks, can you do a video on vectors and their application in physics with electromagnetism? That would be mind blowing, please. Well, Puzzle Master, prepare to have your mind blown. Most vectors in electromagnetism are what you'd call vector fields. Oh, you mean like force fields in sci-fi shows? Not again! The entertainment industry has misused the word field for so long that it's become standard to use it that way. It's never a good idea to learn your science from sci-fi. Remember, sci-fi is short for science fiction. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like sci-fi as much as the next geek. It makes for good entertainment, just not good education. I'm getting off topic! If you've tried to look this stuff up online or in a book somewhere, you've probably seen something like this. Or maybe in 3D, like this. They call this the electric field of a dipole. Physics teachers have a fetish with dipoles for some reason. Anyway, the lines in this diagram are called field lines. And books will have them for electric fields, magnetic fields, and sometimes even gravitational fields. This isn't really what a field is. With pictures, pictures like this, it isn't even clear why they're called fields. You might be thinking at this point, then why do we even draw them this way? Because humans are lazy creatures. What a field really looks like is kind of a pain to draw by hand, which a hundred years ago was the only way to draw things. See, a century ago, a bunch of scientists got together one day and decided to accept a little loss of information and draw fields using lines. The key point here being that these diagrams don't tell you everything that fields can. So the use is kind of limited if you don't already understand fields. We can do better! In the vectors video, we said position was a way of assigning numbers to places. All the places! This has the benefit of turning geometry into algebra and arithmetic. A field is the same thing. In fact, you could call this a position field, although no one ever does. It even looks like a field. Say a football field. Or a mind field. This is a field of values. Position is not the only number we can assign to these places. If it's just numbers we're assigning, then we call it a scalar field like the voltage in this diagram for a positive point charge. If those numbers also have direction, then we call it a vector field, like the electric field in this diagram for the same positive point charge, which is actually the direction of the largest change in the voltage numbers. You can even make diagrams like this for multiple charges. Let's say you've got this one positive charge over here, then an equal but negative charge over here. This is the electric field for the one on the left. This is the electric field for the one on the right. And here they are overlapping. Now let's say we were to place another a really tiny charge about here. First, it's not going to care what the entire field looks like. It only cares about the field where it happens to be. Second, it's not going to respond to both these fields separately, only the combination of the two. This is called superposition and it can be done with all of the arrows in the full diagram. If you play a game of connect the dots, you can get that stupid line diagram we were talking about before. This same process can be done for the electric field for two positive charges, or five random charges, or the magnetic field from two circular coils, or even the gravitational field from the Earth and the Moon. The point here is that it's best to think of vectors like velocity, acceleration, and force as though they are attached to objects. And think of vector fields as though they are attached to space. Got another mind-blowing question? Ask in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.